Hello everybody, so welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. Last time we were looking at the while loop, so this time we're going to look at other forms of loops that are provided by many number of programming languages. They all do the same thing, they all allow you to iterate over and over again, but different loops are suitable for different situations. Um, the for loop does exactly the same thing as the while loop, except it's much handier if you're doing a countdown or count up, so let's say we're we're counting from 0 to n minus 1 or n minus 1 to 0 of for loop does it slightly easier. If we look at an example of a while loop to print out the numbers 1 to 5, we'll start off by assigning a to 1, then we'll say while a is not equal to 6, print out a and then add 1 on to a. So we iterate through and we get our answer. The for loop does the exact same thing as this but the way we express it in pseudocode is more compact. So we declare the a within the first statement and we declare the range of it. So we say for a in 1 to 5, do print a. So the for loop says declare an integer type called a, start counting at 1, increment by 1 each time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and stop at 5. It's a very compact way of expressing the same thing as if we go back again. The declaration is done in it, the condition is done in it, and the increment bit is done in it, all by just saying for some value in a range, the range here being 1 to 5, do print out an end for then at the end. So lots and lots of programming languages implement that, and it's a nice way when you're counting up and down, or we'll see later, um, accessing elements in an array and things like that. So the general is for some value in a range, do a series of statements. The, uh, the next type of loop we're going to look at is called the do loop. It's not implemented in all programming languages, but many of them use it. It's the exact same thing as a while loop, except a while loop can be run zero or any number of times, whereas a do loop is run at least once. So let's say we have a menu program that we know we'll have to print out the menu at least once. We say do, print out the, the menu options 1, 2, 3, and 9 to exit. And then we'll get whatever value the user puts in. And if they select 1, we'll run some function to input data. If they select 2, we'll delete the data. If they select 3, we'll print the report. But if they select 9, we exit the menu. So because we have to print out this menu at least once, we'll do keep printing out this menu until they select 9. And while value not equal to 9, if they select 9, then we exit the loop. We can see it's exactly the same as the while loop, except the, the condition is moved to the end instead of the start, so it happens to happen at least once. As I said, for menu options, sometimes it's clearer when you're reading somebody else's code to do it. Not all programming languages have the do loop, some do and some don't, but um, if you're in one, you know it's, it's going to be a menu or something like that. Its general form is do some statements while some condition is still true. Uh, and there we go, and when the condition is false, it exits the loop. Our final one, and is less frequently than either the do or for in programming languages, uh, the languages developed by Niklaus Wirth, Pascal, uh, Modular 2 and Modular 3, for example, have this loop loop, which is like a while loop, except it has no condition, it's an infinite loop, it keeps on going. Um, we don't necessarily think that's a great idea, but there are certain circumstances where it might be useful to have a kind of infinite loop. And then it does have a command called exit that allows you to break out of the loop if needed. So um, if we were to implement printing 1 to 5 as a loop loop, we'd have loop print a, if a equals 5, then exit. Otherwise, add 1 onto a. So a would be 1, we'd print it out, we check if, if a is f 6 is not. So we'd add one, it's two, we print out two, then three, then four, then five. When A is five, we print out five, then is it equal to six? No, it's not. We don't exit. Add one on at six. We go back, is it, then exit on six. So that's a, a loop loop. Um, Strictly how we define an algorithm is a program that terminates, and in Alan Turing's 1936 paper on the halting problem, he makes this point. It's not really an algorithm unless it terminates. So we have to ensure, if we're designing code like this, that A will sometime, so at some point get the value 6 and exit, otherwise there'll be a problem that it'll be an infinite loop, which we don't want. We don't want the loops to go on forever. 
um, we want them to s the programs to finish at some stage. So our general statement, I guess, is if do some statements loop rather so, do some statements if some condition then exit and if do more statements then end loop. So that's three kinds of loops. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks very much.